What's up YouTube? In today's video we're going to cover how to solve a couple common issues with a full menu using custom code. I've been really impressed lately with how easy it is to solve most web design problems with a couple Google searches using jQuery. Hopefully after seeing this process you'll be able to apply this to your own projects and start solving problems. So the first thing I would like to do is whenever we open this menu I'd like the page not to be able to scroll anymore just because it's a little distracting. When you first started using Webflow, you may have been one of the many of us to set the body to overflow hidden and then wonder why on the published site it wouldn't scroll anymore. That's because this is a natural uh, property of CSS that whenever the body is set to overflow hidden, it doesn't scroll. So we can use that to our advantage. We know that on click of the hamburger menu, we're going to want to change the CSS of the body to set it to overflow hidden. So if we think about some of those things I just said, first thing is we need to find out how to do on click of a hamburger menu. So I'll just type in jQuery uh, click and see what comes up. So I'll just open up the first result. There's many good ones. And then we'll pass up the HTML because we don't need that part. And then here's how we uh, do a click function in JavaScript. So I'll just copy that for jQuery, open up the project settings, and then inside the body we're going to need to create a script tag, open and close script tag, just like this. And inside those script tags we can paste our code. So this first part is the target. What do we actually want to be able to click on? And for us it's going to be this um, hamburger button right here. So I'll just copy the class for that. And the, our example is using a pound sign, so an ID but we can easily change that to a period for a class and just put our class name. So on click of this class, we want to do some sort of action and we're going to delete this alert action because that's not the one we want. But inside this open and close, we are going to paste some code and what we're really looking for is we want to change the CSS of the body. So I'm just going to type in jQuery change CSS and see what comes up. I'm going to open this up and it looks like there's a couple different options. We can apply CSS and we were, we're looking to set it using the property name and the value. So that would be this right here. So I'm just going to copy all that and open up our code. Now inside this action we can go ahead and paste and instead of targeting all paragraphs we need to change this to the body. Instead of background color we're going to change this to overflow. And then for this property, we're going to change it to hidden. And then we're going to go ahead and save. And we have to publish our changes to see it live on the site. And then once we open the site, so by default right now I can scroll up and down. As soon as I open this, now I can no longer scroll. The only problem is when I close this again, I still can't scroll. So we really need a first click and a second click. First click of this hamburger, we want to set the overflow to hidden. And then second click, we want to return it to auto by default. So I'm going to actually type in jQuery first click and second click. And then we can pull that up. And I'll just pull up the first one that comes across. So in forms like this, usually the person submitting the question doesn't have the correct code. So you want to scroll down to at least the next answer and just grab the code that you find there. And then we can open this up and I'll just create a new line and we'll paste the code we have. So it looks like this is going to do exactly what I need it to do. So I'll just copy this class that we have here and replace our target right here with the new class. And then this code right here to change the body, um, we really want by default we uh, can replace right here. It says if the clicks are odd, an odd number of clicks, we'll plug in we want the overflow to be auto. That's just the normal setting. And then if it's even, so this else statement right here, we can replace this comment and say uh, hidden, which is what we have right here. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'll delete this first piece of code because we don't need it anymore. I'll save that and publish. And let's see if it works. All right, so on page load, we can scroll. We open the menu. We can't scroll anymore, close the menu, and now we can scroll again. So that is working perfectly. The next thing we want to do is whenever we click on this gray area, we want the menu to collapse. 
So what we could do is try setting an interaction in Webflow. So on this background uh, color, this sort of overlay, we can do an on click. We want to play an animation we already have set up called Close Menu. And on the second click, we'll do the same thing. Apply this to the class and publish. And let's see what happens. So on the live site, refresh. We open the menu, it works. We close the menu, it works. We come to open the menu again, and it doesn't do anything. And the reason for that is, if we look at the menu, we have an open, on the first click of this hamburger icon, we want to open the menu, and on the second click, we want to close it. So when we went to the site, we opened it with the first click, but then we closed it with a separate interaction on the grayed out part. Then we went back to click on here to open it again. It was the, only the second click, so it acted like it was going to close the menu, even though the menu was already closed. So that's the problem with having uh, two elements that are both tied to the same interaction. So I'm just going to delete this altogether on the background overlay. Just delete that interaction. And what really would be nice is if whenever we click on this gray part, we could somehow uh, force the user's computer to click on the X for us. That way um, we wouldn't have to have two separate interactions. So if I go back and search jQuery click again, and uh, this time I'll open up the first result again, um, looking through all these options. So this is just our normal, you know, normal click we used the first time. But here it says we can trigger an event when a different element is clicked, which is exactly what we want to do. So I'll just copy that code and come over to the project settings. And then we're just going to create a new line underneath. We're creating a separate action. And this one's going to happen anytime we click to the grayed out part. So I need to copy the class for that, which is this one right here. So I'll open that up and paste in that class right here. Anytime we click on this gray out grayed out part and make sure I have the period here we want to click on something else for something else to be clicked in this case it's going to be the nav button and uh, it's important to note here that whatever element you're forcing the user to click on can't be a link block or a button um, it needs to be just a regular div so uh, whenever we click on the background it's going to force the user's mouse to click on the button and it should close it for us so if we save this to test it out, I'll go ahead and publish and see. So we refresh the page. First click, opens up the menu. Click over here, closes the menu. Click over here again, and it opens this time. It works seamlessly, just like we would expect. So that's how to solve some common issues with just a little bit of jQuery. Hopefully this lesson has helped you understand how to piece parts together, do Google searches, uh, just use regular words like we would say uh, when you're trying to find the code that's going to solve the problem. And usually the part you need is going to come up and you can start piecing it together to make these sort of uh, different applications work and to solve these problems. Hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.